Uh, first of all, right over here on my far left, y'all's right, be Bob Hinkle. Bob Hinkle's got a book called Call Me Lucky, A Texan in Hollywood. And I'll tell you a little bit of something about him. He, uh, he's been in movies. He's produced movies. He was a voice coach for Paul Newman and Patricia Neal and Melvin Douglas in the movie HUD. He was the voice coach for James Dean and Rock Hudson and Elizabeth Taylor in the movie Giant. Uh, knew John Wayne pretty good too, I think. Did a little film work with him, for him too. And he was a manager for Marty Robbins and Chill Wills, at least those two. And next to him we've got Don Reynolds, and he was the last of the Little Beavers. He was in a couple of Gene Autry movies, The Last Roundup and Beyond the Purple Hills. And uh, he was in, what, three, four, five Charles Sterrett movies? Three, Durango Kid, Charles Sterrett. He was in a couple of uh, uh, Roy Rogers movies. He was in with Eddie Dean. And if any of y'all or kids or grandkids have seen Lord of the Rings, had a big white horse in there, and he was the trainer. And uh, he's got a book up there too, so uh, when all this is over, you can go up there and talk and all that kind of stuff. Pat Jenkins is right here. Jacobs. Jacobs. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, I can't even read my own right, man. I got my own glasses on this time. He's got a book called uh, Outlaws, Outcasts, and Second Chess Horses. Uh, he's the Cowtown uh, Society of uh, Western Music. They got him voted the Book of the Year. He's in the Western Swing Hall of Fame. And he's had three world champion cutting horses. And uh, they won awards in the National Association of Cutting Horse Association for six years. And I asked him, I said, did he win or did his horses? And he said it was the horses. So right now, if y'all got, if anybody got any questions they want to ask right now? Oh, come on, Bob, you know one at least. Uh, has everybody introduced oh. themselves? Oh, I'm sorry, Scott. Yeah, I didn't see you sneak in here. Yes, howdy. Good time. This is Scott Mendez. He was born on the 4th of July, 1969, in California. And his grandfather was an original uh, member of the Cowboys Turtle Association, which became the PRCA. Rode steers when he was five years old. 15, he qualified for the Nevada High School Rodeo uh, Finals. And in 1988, he got his uh, PRCA permit. He is a founding member of the Professional Bull Riders. And uh, boy, we got a whole bunch here on him. In 1997, he became world champion. And uh, he is, uh, right now, I think, are you still in the Professional Rodeo Association? Actually, uh, actually uh, full-time ministry. Yep. He's the full-time ministry. Got spurs with Jesus. Spurring with Jesus, yes, sir. And uh, conquering the beast mm -hmm. is one of the main things. So right now, is it like say, if anybody got any questions, please feel free to answer. Um, yeah, I got some questions. All right, Bob. Why are you up there? Uh, I'm just up here to kind of MC here, uh, mainly. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I know they do. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> no, I know why you're up there. Um, <coughs> gosh, I just draw a blank. Um, Bob wanted me up here because my uncle was Pat Buttram, and he was in the movie with Gene Autry, and uh, he was also on TV as Mr. Haney, and did four of the uh, Disney cartoon movies, and he was the voice in four of those. Uh, so that's one reason I'm up here. Got a man right up here. Yes, sir. I think he did a little bit. Uh, it, it, there's a good book out called uh, Public Cowboy Number One, and it's got everything you want to know about Gene Autry in there, whether you like it or not. You know, <laughs> he was a human being. <laughs> I think he was. He was very loyal to all of his people. And this man right here has worked with him, so he can tell you more. Don? He was pretty much a businessman, and uh, uh, he wanted everything right and uh, uh, you know he didn't play around on his uh, 
sets any, or I couldn't get away with it anyway. He <laughs> nailed me. Of course, I was little, you know. But uh, uh, other than that, he was a great guy to work for. I, I just have a request. It's hard to hear. We have no control over the PA. So if y'all want to take the mics off the stand and just pass them back and forth as questions are asked, that, that would probably help because it's kind of hard to hear up here a little bit. Oh, I love Tim. He was so funny and uh, a very talented fella. And um, I worked in three movies with him, with Charles Starrett. And uh, he could play any kind of instrument. I mean, he was just a very talented man. Just talking about Gene's loyalty, uh, he was, I guess, loyal to everybody that he worked with. And as far as fooling around uh, on the set, the only time I ever heard anything was one time he and a, somebody got the kidding around and they fell in a lake or something. And that's about it. I don't know. Anybody else? Hey, Scott. You, uh, you were telling me about your granddad hanging out somewhere. Was it here at the stock show with Ben Johnson and, and Richard Farnsworth? And, was it here? Uh, exactly, Bob. Actually, it was at the National Finals Gold Card Room. Uh, before the performances, all the older gentlemen get together and have coffee and watch the performance. But uh, my grandfather had a lot of uh, shared a lot of wisdom about what went on when they uh, would come. He was from California, so he came to Texas and New York uh, back in the early 40s and late 30s and so forth. But told a little history about Gene Autry stopping off in uh, Dublin, Texas and uh, they would compete and load the stock up there. And I think it was the Lightning Sea Ranch down in Dublin. Um, Harry Tompkins, Jim Shoulders, all those guys. So they would actually compete and load the stock up and go back to Boston and New York. So I got to, being in, that he was in my family, my grandfather shared a lot of good stories with me. So did, did you spend any time with Ben Johnson or, or Richard Farnsworth or any of them guys? Did you spend any time with them folks? Well, my first couple years at the finals, yeah, I got to be around them a little bit. My grandfather would introduce me. Uh, they were all real good. Wil Wil Wilford Brimway roped in our circuit out there in the wilderness circuit. Um, just good men, really helped the sport of rodeo, you know, a lot uh, in all that they did in acting and, uh, you know, preserving the history of the Wild West, for sure. I've got a question for you. Uh, your grandfather was uh, one of the original members of the Cowboy Turtles Association. How'd the Turtles deal come in here? I thought they was riding horses, you know. <laughs> well, I hope I get this right. Uh, I think it was just kind of a motto. They were quick uh, to stick their necks out, but slow to get anything done. So they kind of uh, brought that on board as a, as a tagline and a motto. <laughs> That's all right. One of the stories I heard about the Turtles was that uh, they were so slow to organize. That's the reason they uh, called them turtles before the RCA started. And if you have a turtle's button from back then, it's worth a fortune right now. <laughs> and I didn't keep mine. <laughs> hey, Don. Yes. 